early stages of the war in Poland and France, the German army utilized primary Dunkelgrau or dark grey painted vehicles. This wasn't just tanks, but armored cars, half tracks, even some of the kitchen wagons were painted the same very dark greyish color. This was not entirely unintentional as at long distances grey will tend to blend into the surrounding colors effectively. At close range, however, or on a high contrasting background like snow, it stands out. This became especially clear in two different situations winter and North Africa. Both faced similar issues. Dunkelgrau was simply not suited to these conditions. When winter came rolling out of the Arctic in Russia, those dark vehicles stood out like huge aim here signs. Out of necessity, the German army used any available material to color their vehicles white including white sheets, piled snow, and perhaps most popular, white wash. Some of the white wash applications even had the added benefit that they would gradually wash away in the late winter and early spring rains, melting away like so much snow. In the North Africa campaign, stretches of bright, sandy desert demanded more appropriate coloration even though the first vehicles sent to fight here were still painted in Dunkelgrau. Many maintenance crews used tan paints to quickly try to make their vehicles less visible until a more permanent solution could be provided, which came sometimes in 1941, when Gelb Brown or Yellow Brown was issued to that front and vehicles intended for it were painted gelb brown instead of Dunkelgrau. On the Eastern Front, the majority of the vehicles were still Dunkelgrau in 1943, when German army issued new orders that the standard base color of all vehicles be made Dunkelgelb, literally dark yellow. The color was not so much yellow as a tan. Regardless of what the shade was, it was applied liberally throughout the Wehrmacht panzers and served as the basis for perhaps the most famous German camouflage pattern, the Hinterhalt Tarnung or Ambush Pattern Camouflage. Due to Germany's shifting fortunes in 1943 and waging an almost entirely defensive war in 1944 on the eastern and newly opened Normandy front, the Wehrmacht looked to develop a camouflage that would be applied at some factories for new or repaired vehicles that would simulate the look of sunlight filtered through foliage. There were two primary styles, one being a dot ambush pattern and the other being the disc ambush pattern. The dot pattern was primarily applied by Dahmer brands where Esman utilized the disc pattern. This applied mostly to the relatively new Panther tanks, though some other vehicles received the camouflage as well. The colors applied at the factory would be a base coat of Dunkelgelb with some road brown or red brown with olive green or olive green. Furthermore, maintenance crews would sometimes paint a vehicle in their own ad hoc version of the ambush pattern, utilizing whatever paint they had available. The primary issue was that pattern was complex and time consuming to apply and there were still paint shortages on the front and at the factories which further delayed crucial needed vehicles from being sent to the front. The order to paint vehicles in Hinterhalt Tarnung started on August 19, 1944 and factories stopped applying it in mid-September 1944 when vehicles would be sent out in the red oxide primer coat and very basic camouflage only to have the order reversed again on October 31, 1944 where Hinterhalt Tarnung was applied again. 
by December the 20th, 1944, a new order went out that had tanks painted in a base coat of dunkelgrün or dark green with applications in hard edged stripes and patches of dunkelgelb and road brown, so dark yellow and red brown, and this appears to be the last order given for camouflage during the war which ended in Europe during May of 1945. Like other militaries, the German army understood that concealing vehicles in either defensive or offensive maneuvers would increase the likelihood of said vehicles surviving the encounter. In addition to 